We're Nate and Kim, and today we are driving our camper van into Sinaloa, which is often said to be Mexico's most dangerous state. This is due to the crime and kidnappings related to the Sinaloa cartel, one of the most dangerous and powerful cartels in the world. According to the US travel advisory, Sinaloa is one of the six Mexican states that you should not travel to. Ooh, that's weird. What is that? It's a bunch of fire. So why on earth would we go there? Well, we're on a mission to drive from Alaska all the way down to Argentina, which means that sometimes we have no other choice than to pass through a few more dangerous areas just like this. In this video, we'll be showing you both the good and the bad of what it's really like to drive through Sinaloa. From partying with locals to sleeping in our camper van on the streets of this notoriously dangerous state. We're entering the state by taking a ferry there from Baja. Over there is the boat that is going to take us to Sinaloa. So this makes absolutely zero sense, but apparently I cannot stay with the van as we board it onto the boat, so I have to come here to the passenger terminal as Naik drives the Vinny onto the boat. Alright, we're driving onto the boat here. Atrás, todo atrás. Okay, yes, yes. Well, there's a bunch of people to help you and guide the way, so that's already pretty good. Alright guys, let's do this! Let's board this baby! Now the only thing I have to do is find Nahi because I have no idea where he is <laughs> and he has no idea where I am. <laughs> Alright, so we've been at sea for a couple hours now. This is actually an overnight ferry so it left at 7pm and it's going to be arriving in the morning in Sinaloa. You can book a cabin on these boats so you have a bed to sleep in, but in our case, those were full. We are going to be spending the night here. Good morning. We are getting close to Mazatlan. Just another 20, 30 minutes. I slept okay, -ish. still tired, but getting off the ferry now. Excited to be in the mainland, explore the rest of Mexico. I was a little bit anxious about Sinaloa. It is the most dangerous state in Mexico, but it's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine. Freedom! Now I just need to find Kim. Kim. Kim, Kim. Kim. Oh, there she is. We made it into mainland Mexico with Vinny. Woohoo! <laughs> So yeah, the boat was supposed to arrive at 7 in the morning here in the harbor. It's now 11 and we've just gotten off. So the problem is we've got quite a bit of driving to do today and if we leave now we will not make it before sunset and in Sinaloa no one, even the locals, drives after sunset because that is like truly considered dangerous. So we're gonna have to come up with a new plan. It's not starting off well is it? <laughs> That's us. Oh, that's good. Mm. This is a coconut water with some um, pinadillo, or how do you call it? It's really, really tasty. So we're now in the port town of Mazatlan here. Mazatlan is considered a safer spot within Sinaloa. It has quite a bit of people traveling through because a ferry comes here. Oh, this looks so good. It's probably my favorite Mexican breakfast. Chilaquiles with some cheese, some cream, and then some red sauce, some beans, a little bit of meat in there as well. So, we're back in the van. We've decided that we're going to be spending one night here in Mazatlan because we really don't think it would be very smart to drive around the highways of Sinaloa at night. One particular challenge though is that we're gonna have to find a good spot to sleep and usually, as you guys know, we just park our van up on the street somewhere in a quiet neighborhood. But yeah, this is Sinaloa, so we're not entirely confident if that's gonna be possible here. We're gonna check out the town to get a better feel for the place and then decide what we're going to do about our sleeping situation. So we figured since that spot we were at, is super close to the beach. Why not make a quick pit stop at the beach? But it is so busy. So it's uh, Easter week, we call it Semana Santa here, it's Easter on Sunday. So everybody has the week off or at least a long weekend off. So uh, it's a holiday today. Everybody has time off and everybody's come to the beach. say with 100% certainty that that is not what I expected. My first impression of Sinaloa to be like. <laughs> My oh, goodness. That's great here.
We decided we would just sleep out on the streets because Sinaloa or not, we didn't feel unsafe in this town at all. So we're gonna park it up here for the night. We looked for a spot on a quiet street. This is a beautiful residential neighborhood. When it gets dark, we have to put the lights on and we don't want people all over the neighborhood to notice that we're in here. We're just gonna put this, our little tapete, up here. I have to push it in there. <laughs> like this. Also, put our shower curtain here. Now, normally, no one can tell. Hola! <laughs> so, I just went to the store to uh, recharge our internet subscription because we were out of data. And I was trying to upload our last YouTube video. It wasn't going too swell. Guess what else I got you? Paletas! Ooh. Ice cream! Which one do you want? The strawberry one or the coconut one? Coconut, coconut, coconut. Thank you. All right, come on, internet gods. Good morning. We survived the night. Um, all I'm missing to survive this day is some toilet paper. If you could just pass me some, that would be great. I don't know. Ah, uh, van life. There's some toilet paper in between the plates and the coffee mugs. <laughs> <laughs> Alright guys, it's time to get on the road. We're gonna be leaving Mazatlan and then driving for about 150 kilometers through the state of Sinaloa and then we're gonna drive towards Guadalajara, Jalisco. Jalisco is the next state. Sinaloa is at level 4 which is the highest warning level. Um, Jalisco is at level 3. It's still considered like a pretty dangerous state but we're gonna go there because we're going to Guadalajara. We're gonna meet up with people that live there actually. They invite us over. They're two of our patrons, Pam and Steve. But since not super safe in uh, Sinaloa, I'm just gonna be really safe. <laughs> Put on my cattle hat. <laughs> Fly drive. Because Where's your kettle, Ken? <laughs> oh. You didn't come prepared? I'll take the cup. <laughs> Vamos hasta uh, Guadalajara. Guadalajara? Y, sí. ¿Y qué es el ruta el más seguro? Mira, la verdad, yo, yo no, no te he salido para aquellos lados. Yo no te sabría decir exactamente ¿Cuál es la ruta más segura? Okay, okay. Solo he oído que pues, se van todo derecho y ahí ya sí, sí, sí. hasta ahí, pero más no te podría ayudar. Okay, okay. Okay. Gracias. Eso fue muy comforting. Pero, anyway, we also, I mean, we also asked Steve and Pam. We sent them a message: Is this route that we're going to be taking is it safe? Yeah. Um, and they told us that that should be a pretty good yeah, route. They're local too. It's yeah. fine. Yeah, they're local too. Well, I mean, it's not very comforting as guys like, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't really know. We're now officially out of Mazatlan and officially into the state Sinaloa. of true Sinaloa. are going to be thinking you are absolutely bonkers for driving through Sinaloa, driving through that bit of Mexico. But first off, I mean, there's no other way. If you want to drive from Alaska to Argentina, at one point, you're going to have to drive past this part of Mexico. We've been getting a few comments uh, about the recent news of Americans being adopted in Mexico. I think some of them were killed. And don't get me wrong, that is really horrible. Uh, especially when it happens to you or your family. But the truth is, those are really very isolated cases, but the media plays them up for days and weeks and these really big headlines, like it's happening all the time. But the reality is, millions of people visit Mexico every year without any issues, without running into trouble, and bad things happen everywhere in the world. Like you could be at home crossing the street, you could go run over by a truck. So we're confident and, and we're just confident. Do I look? I sound so confident saying this. No, but we're pretty sure that this is going to turn out fine. So let's hope I'm right. We'll find out in this video. Ooh, that's weird. What is that? There's a bunch of fire. They're 
walking off the road again. A few weeks ago there was some issues with the cartel. Some of the one of the leaders got arrested and then they blocked off all the roads, they put things on fire on the roads and all that stuff. So it was a bit of a madness here. But, but now it's just it's just farming. It doesn't seem related. like they're blocking the roads, so it should be fine. Hola, buenos días. Hola, 200 gente. 200 gente. Sí, gracias. For the next part, we're going to be taking the toll road, it's a highway that runs from Sinaloa to Jalisco. Uh, our friend said it's supposed to be the safest route, so we're going to stick to this. Uh, so it's, a, it's more of a closed off highway instead of <clears throat> going through all the local spots, running through the towns and all that stuff. So it's cost, the safest way to get across. Yeah, it costs quite a bit of money actually, it costs more in toll than it costs for the fuel, but uh, I mean, Safety first, no? We're driving on the highway now and it's really crazy how people overtake each other here. Yeah. Like there's a big truck here. <laughs> and even when there's oncoming traffic, people just overtake. Like the truck moves a little bit to the side. I would go in the middle and then the guy coming from the other side would move a little bit to the side. So we're just going. <laughs> but that's crazy. There's just like trucks going at each other and then cars going in between. Woo! Well, it works. It works. Another toll booth. Hola. Hola. Yes. Okay. Gracias. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, "Buen viaje." Have a good day. I was like, "Have a good." Oh wait. Have a good day. <laughs> We have to pay again for the highway? It's a lot. I thought the criminals were robbing people here, not states. <laughs> Hello, I'm gonna start this. There's a bunch of these little stalls selling food and stuff next to the highway. Tienes <laughs> mango fresca? Ah, okay, okay. Es mango. Es mango seco. Sí. Sí, está bien rico. Pura pulpita de mango dice todo. ¿Y cuánto es? 120 esa. 120. ¿Quieres probar? Sí. Sí, okay, okay. Está bien buena. La última. La última ya. Qué bueno. Se vende mucho ese mango. Ah, sí. Por favor. Gracias. Buen día. Gracias. This is dehydrated mango. It's basically dried mango. You've never tried it. I hope it's good because it's a really big bag. What? This was this was the last that she had of it. It's good. When you put your nose in the bag, it doesn't smell good, but it's almost like candy. <laughs> That's good. We're coming up to a military checkpoint here. The Guardia Nacional, State Police. This is not the time to offer them some mango? <laughs> I don't think so. Huh? Hola, buenos días. Buenos días. Yeah. Ah. Gracias. Gracias. They thought, I don't want to mess with that guy, he looks really dangerous, just pass him through. <laughs> you didn't even have your kettle on. <laughs> Imagine if I'd be sitting here in the kettle. <laughs> A few hours later, we'd made our way over to the state of Jalisco, which, similar to Sinaloa, is considered one of the most dangerous states you can possibly visit in Mexico.
So we're now in Jalisco and the town we are in actually has a drink, a very popular spirit named after it. Some of you might have some very good memories of this drink. Others might have some very bad memories of it. And then there is a certain select few that probably has zero memories whatsoever after having this drink. This is such a beautiful colonial little town. I love the buildings, they're all colorful. And I love the vibe and it's a Saturday and it's a holiday so people are just hanging out with their families, drinking. Mostly tequila, I would imagine. It's only five bucks. It's only five bucks, just take okay. it. In the middle of the square you have the traditional pole dancers, I think it's pole dancers, right? They climb on top of this 15 meter high pole, swing off of ropes from it to the ground. It's pretty crazy. It's crazy. And it's like a ceremony, they do it once every hour or something? I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> I think the most impressive thing is the guy who's upside down, plays his flute all the time. How crazy is that? I love how despite the fact that there are lots of people here, they're all locals. Like I haven't heard a single person speak English. These people are all Mexican. <laughs> ¿Y usted es de Noruega? ¿Pero? ¿Y usted es de Noruega? Ah, Bélgica. ¿Y Bélgica? Ah, ¿Cómo? Bélgica. Ah, Bélgica. Sí. Y, y oiga, qué bueno que no lo tocó una belga. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gracias, gracias, gracias. Estamos bien. ¿Con eso? No, sí, se mastica y se tira. No, que se es muy dulce. Sí. No. Belga. En México sí, le hizo sí, la sí, belga. Sí, sí, sí. <laughs> Entonces has de tener buena belga. Hasta luego, señorita. Gracias. Gracias, gracias señor. muchas gracias. Es muy rico. <laughs> Tequila is actually made out of agave. And this is part of the agave plant. This is the sugary part. I think they make the juice out of this to make the agave syrup and then turn it into delicious tequila. I saw they were selling it, but I didn't know what it was. And this guy just came up to me and he's like, here you go. Mexican people are so nice. This is not, is this what tequila is made from? Yeah. That's weird. It's really, it's super sweet. The traditional cocktail of tequila, Canta e Hita. You pay five bucks and you get to keep the cup apparently. Five bucks for the cocktail and the cup. That's a lot of tequila. Good. It's good. Pretty salty too. It's bringing back a lot of memories, both good and bad. <laughs> Cheers. This is the oldest very traditional tequila bar here in Tequila. Pretty famous, filled with locals. It's not like a tourist place at all. And this is a drink at a house. Local tequila drink. It's very good, very addictive. It's very really good. <laughs> At this point in the evening, we realized there is one thing that people really seem to enjoy doing when they're in tequila. And that is to have lots of tequila. This is Don Javier, the original owner of this bar and the life of the party. Mike even talked me into doing a tequila shot, which, as many of you probably know, in the moment itself always seems like a good idea. I was gonna say good morning, but 
I've seen better mornings. I've seen better mornings. <laughs> and you want to hear something about safety? I remember making it back to the van, like opening up the window really big, like this wide. In the, middle, in, here. in the middle of a busy street, because we're in the middle of a busy street. And he just fell asleep. Like within minutes, he was like. <laughs> and I looked at the window and I was like, dude. No, we're in a list going in the middle of the street. People are passing us by, partying, and you're like, I'm gonna sleep at the window wide open. Well, should we the tequila flavor? <laughs> Oh, air conditioning. <laughs> that seems to be the reality of drinking past the age of 30. You need a lot to get you going in the morning, even if you didn't stay out past midnight. All right. Good luck, Ira. Here we come. Because see, we've made it into Guadalajara and we're parking up at this parking lot. And we can just stay here like it's a secure parking lot. You can tell by the barbed wire, it's very secure. <laughs> such a beautiful city. I didn't expect this at all because it's really not popular for tourists. And even though it's Mexico's second biggest city and in one of the more dangerous states, I would say I don't feel unsafe here in the city no, center. Not at all. You can tell there's lots of people around, a bunch of normal but people. It's so. kind of like always the common sense stuff. Don't go walking around in the outer neighborhoods that don't look as good and yeah. just stick to where there are people in the daytime. <laughs> So this is La Libertad. This is the largest indoor market in Guadalajara. It's also a bit of a maze. Like, it's massive. They have everything here. They have sections with electronics here. They have shoes. They have handbags, clothes, whatever you can think of. Souvenirs. <laughs> like I said, anything. <laughs> Got this whole full bag of veggies and fruits as well. Only 95 pesos, less than $5. So. I think we're doing a really good deal here. Gonna be good for the budget here, Guadalajara. All right, local specialty of Guadalajara is tortas arrugadas, which means drowned sandwiches. <laughs> it's in this really thick sauce and it's all soaking in it, so it's a bit soggy, but that's the way it's supposed to be eaten. So you can actually choose your own toppings from the bar, whatever you like. But the lady just showed me what she did for me, actually, what's the most traditional way to eat it with just some onions, some chili sauce, and some limes. It's because she knew it. it's the first time eating it. She was so nice. It's good, the flavor's really good. It's a little bit weird eating like this soggy bread because normally you don't do this, but it is good. Now, people typically start thinking about safety when they're doing something new, like traveling to a new country. But there are ways you are exposed in your daily life which you might not even think about. In 2021, 212 million Americans had their data hacked and exposed online. I'm not saying that's scary. I'm saying that because there's something you can do to prevent that happening to you. Kim and I have been using Surfshark daily now for the past four years to give ourselves peace of mind when we surf the internet. Surfshark is a VPN service. You might be wondering, Nate, what is a VPN? What does that even do? A VPN is an app you can download on your phone or your laptop. It encrypts all your internet activity when you're browsing the internet so nobody can steal your sensitive information. It helps to protect you against password leaks, your social media accounts being hacked, and strangers accessing your banking information. Now you might be thinking, that will never happen to me. I don't need it. Well, you kind of do. It's like saying, I've never been in a car accident, so I don't need car insurance. We really love Surfshark because it's so easy to use. You just open the app, click this quick connect button, and then just wait a few seconds and you are browsing securely. 99%, 100, see, we're protected. For just $2.49 a month, you can get Surfshark for you and your family. It's a deal for our viewers. It gives you 83% off of their normal price and, and they have a 30 day money back guarantee. So there's literally no risk for you to try this out. With Surfshark, you can use unlimited devices. So with just one subscription, you can protect yourself and your whole household. We recommend Surfshark to our friends and family all the time and we recommend you try it out too. So click the link in the description box below or scan this QR code from your phone and get Surfshark now. All right, we've made it back home. 
home is currently like a little oven. It is so hot in the van when it's been out in the sun all day long. I'm gonna crank up the ventilation and open the door like this. The security guard is gonna leave after the sun sets. They're gonna lock the gate. They're gonna leave us in here. Today we're heading to Lake Chapala, which is the biggest freshwater lake in all of Mexico. It's where our patrons live that invited us. Excited to meet them. It's always nice to meet new people, especially if there are viewers and they probably like us a little bit already. Hopefully they'll still like us after they meet us. <laughs> Before we continue, I wanted to address something because I know that many people watching this are going to be thinking, you guys are absolutely bonkers. You're so naive. You've only been in this part of Mexico for a couple days, but you think you know everything. You keep saying how you feel perfectly safe, but you don't realize at all what you've gotten yourself into. And I would never, ever put myself in danger like that. And so I think it's very important to just say that the goal of this video is not to convince anyone to travel to Sinaloa or Jalisco. Nor is it to convince you that there are zero problems here and that everything is just la la land and that you shouldn't be careful or anything. The reason we're making this video is to show you a different side to Mexico, away from all the cartel violence that usually makes for really big headlines, but usually does not affect travelers to Mexico at all. We've traveled to many countries over the past few years that people often say are super dangerous to be in, like Guatemala, El Salvador, Honduras. We get messages all the time about people saying we're risking our lives by being in Mexico. We've always taken extra care in all those places, but we've never had any issues and we've only met really kind people along the way, just like you've seen so far in this video. And we want to share that as well to like balance out the scales a little bit, I guess, on the safety issue. All right. Time to hit the roads. Oh. <laughs> I stalled. <laughs> Gracias. Gracias. All right, we just made it to Pam and Steve's place. They're a retired couple from the US and they moved down here last year in May. We're super excited to meet them because they seem really, really nice and they live in Mexico. So it's kind of cool to get the local's perspective as well. Are you Pam? I'm Pam. Oh, so nice to meet you. Nice Hi. to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you. And if you want another beer? Sure. Okay. <laughs> oh, wow, it's beautiful. Oh, and it's oh, really wow. cool in here. Yeah, it is cool in here. Mm -hmm. is this, what, <laughs> this is what most Mexican homes look like? or? Um, this house was built in 2018. Okay, so it's, it's so it's pretty new. fairly modern, but it's built with Mexican style, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. You made us cookies, cookies <laughs> and I got you some chocolate for Easter. Oh, really? From the Belgian guy. Oh, that's oh, so oh, oh, thank you so much. So, because my mom always buys me chocolate for Easter, but obviously this this year she can't do that. <laughs> that's this amazing. From the guy in um, Chapala, and it's actually real Belgian chocolate. Oh really? It's better yes. than everything. <laughs> when oh, I seen, thank you. When I seen he was selling them, I, I bought them for everybody in the conference. And so Pam and Steve also run a mail service, <laughs> <laughs> don't you, Steve? And they, um, you can actually. Oh, well, I thought something. you was a better kid than that. I'm <laughs> open that box. <laughs> like, what did you have shipped here? Uh, just a little small, small package with some uh, inflatable toys. <laughs> <laughs> That's the OnlyFans channel. <laughs> <laughs> so Naika has ordered himself an inflatable kayak. Oh, it looks like a nice one. You got chairs and everything. Yeah. Oh. All right, I'm ready. I'm ready for the flood. Let it rain. <laughs> Wow, look at this view again. Unbelievable. <laughs> oh wow, Kim, what did you get? It's the great reveal. Yes, yes. <laughs> Alright, so um, Pam and Steve invited us out for dinner at, what's this place called? La Cima. La Cima. It's a, it's a popular, because popular of the spot view. because of the great view. Unbelievable. And Garst had some food. I was really in the mood for a steak after eating so many tacos and tortas and <laughs> steak. But I think Kim really is the, the winner with the impressiveness of the dish here. This is a molcajete, which is 
I, I'm gonna call it a Mexican sizzling rock or sizzling, <laughs> sizzling, sizzling stone bowl, and it's filled with, in this case, um, seafood and some meat in there as well. And there's chicken and chicken. There's there's cheese and sauce. Look how good this looks. Try a bit of the seafood. Ooh, good. Mmm. How are you liking yours? Oh, I love it. Yeah, <laughs> it's delicious. Good? Mm -hmm. And you're having ribeye too, right? Yeah. Yep. Excellent. Excellent, yeah. Very good. Mouth watering. <laughs> we spent a couple of days with Pam and Steve and they showed us around their beautiful lakeside town. And as it turns out, Pam is actually an incredible chef and she loves cooking for her guests. Some breakfast. Isn't this amazing? American style pancakes and some bacon. We never leave it. <laughs> Thank you. Can, can we stay here forever? <laughs> And on the last night we were there, they cooked up a goodbye feast for everyone. Alright, cooking dinner off for Pam and Steve, who is also invited the neighbors. They're Canadian, so they should be nice, I think. <laughs> some salmon, some asparagus, some grilled carrots. Alright. Wow, this looks beautiful. Awesome. Awesome. That is so beautiful. Yeah, I haven't tasted it yet, so... <laughs> My mouth is watering. I can I tell. Just, yeah. Cheers. 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 Got a stretch, stretch. Cheers. 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 Wonderful dinner. Dinner, wonderful, wonderful neighbors friends. and friends. So I actually have a question for all of you guys. Sure. Because this video is about um, driving through a part of Mexico that isn't really considered very safe. And we were just wondering, you all came here, retired here, have these beautiful homes here. How do you feel about the safety in Mexico? I feel it's very safe. We walk to town every day. We, we meet really yeah. nice people. They say hello. Um, we don't hang out in bars. Well, yeah. no. <laughs> right? We don't do a lot of late night stuff. A lot, a lot yeah. of late nights. Unless it's like a, uh, yeah. something festival that's going on in the plaza, then it's yeah. safe because everybody's yeah. there. Yeah. But to like wander the streets at night. There's yeah. areas in our cities up north that we wouldn't go at night either. Yeah. You know, or by ourselves or whatever, yeah. you know, you know kind of where. But yeah. it's we, it's yeah. really good. I we, No one's given me a reason to be afraid. Yeah. No. Mm -hmm. You Same just got to be aware, right? And we yeah. drove twice down two different ways and both ways we were treated wonderfully yeah. by the Mexican yeah. people. Yeah. 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 We got stuck on the beach in Baja on the last day, driving out of the beach and we got stuck. And within two minutes there was a Mexican guy, he was there with his truck, he hooked us up, is, pulled is us out. Too much yeah. for you, Pam? Pam had, had a little incident on, on the hill there. It's kind of a steep oh, hill. Oh yeah, very and steep. And her feet very kind good. of got out from underneath her. Take the rest she, she fell over. By the time I turned around to go and help her, yeah. there was already five Mexican people. Yeah, Picking that's her crazy. Up. They, they just swooped her I just was like on the ground and then I was up. <laughs> and then they gave Mike the dirty look. <laughs> yeah. Why didn't you help her? Is this your wife? <laughs> Why are you not helping her? She you? looked really beautiful and elegant <laughs> falling <laughs> though. She did. Thank you guys so much for having us. Thank yes, you. We really you really enjoyed it here. Thank you. Nice, nice meeting nice you. Yeah. Chocolate! Mm. See, that's the thing about Mexico. In our experience, it is super dangerous here. People are out to kill you, but they do it with love and kindness. And sometimes, if you're lucky, with chocolate. <laughs>